in the case of of Islamist parties, I see very little to suggest that they're going to lose their natural constituency and there's going to be a secularization process that fundamentally pushes things in the in the opposite direction of where it's been going for the last several decades. And then we can kind of get into a discussion about whether Islam itself is distinctive in terms of how it relates to politics. Does Islam have a resources have resources or a heritage that can support a secularization process, and that's a bigger discussion. But um, you know, I would kind of question whether. I, I think we as Americans we tend to we tend to have this notion that process will ultimately trump ideology. That at the end of the day, parties and countries and democracy move along a kind of bold, linear trajectory towards the good things that we believe in, liberalism, democracy, and all of that. And I think that we have to have a little bit more respect or appreciation for cultural and ideological differences. Maybe other regions are not going to go along the same trajectory because there are fundamental differences in the role of religion, the makeup of society, and is there something unique about the Islamist secular divide that makes it more challenging to resolve if we're comparing to the kinds of divides we saw in Latin America, um, Africa, Western Europe, and so on? Well, you know, I think you see right now in the Middle East this incredible upheaval um, among citizens who are looking for uh, governments that will give them greater dignity uh, greater economic prosperity, greater individual freedom. And, uh, you know, Zbigniew Brzezinski sort of describes it as a political churning for, around issues of dignity, um, which I think is right. It's not quite clear, I think, where that churning is going to go. Um, it just, yeah. people are frustrated, they're angry, they've uh, seen a succession of governments that have, uh, aggrandize themselves at the expense of the citizens, and they see themselves being left behind by other regions of the world. So they're searching, and they're trying to figure out, um, I think they have some, some clear ideas of, of, of what they want. They, they want a government that respects their rights. They want a government that will deliver the economic goods. They want a government that will be more accountable. Um, but who's gonna provide that? And I think it's an open contest as to, to who that will be. Um, and Islamism offers one ideology and one answer to that. Um, I think that brand was damaged by the Morsi presidency. So, you know, the question will be, I think, going forward, how does Islamism repackage itself in a way that the voters in the region are going to find it palatable? Because I think people are looking around and they're looking at examples elsewhere in the region because that's what they know. Um, it's their common cultural space. Um, and they have the example of the Brotherhood in Egypt, and they say, I don't necessarily think we want that, or at least a large segment, I think, are saying that. Um, they look at Syria, and I think they're even more alarmed, and they say, we definitely don't want that. We're willing to give up, we're willing up to give up some liberties um, in return for greater security to not get that. Um, so I think it's a very open moment, um, and a moment where the international community has an important role to play in, in trying to shape um, the environment. It's very hard to have democracy when you have the kind of political violence and the kind of social polarization we're seeing right now in the region. Um, I would argue the United States has a responsibility to try to tamp that down as a way of sort of creating more favorable conditions for democracy to emerge.